So jazz is your first love? <laughs> Tell me all about it. I just turned started. I mean, when I when when I got my record contract, mostly what I did was uh, just talk long streams of consciousness over a rhythm track, uh -huh. you know, which was, uh, you know, piano, just a jazz, piano and right? guitar. <laughs> yeah. And just they jazz, just went right? where I went. I was like the saxophone, you know, and they were mm -hmm. the rhythm track, and I was like, just like, um, I used to like to think of that's what I was doing, like a saxophone s solo, and I would like talk. But like, uh, as a rock and roll lyricist, I, uh, I mean, what I'd like to do is write like Smokey Robinson writes, you know, can, you know, something, I know it's my problem. I'm always trying to write the hit of the world. I think it's a drag that everybody thinks that like the masses can only accept this and they're this and they're that. Everybody has a real socialistic or communist Well, I just don't view. believe in, you know, I don't believe in the masses consciousness in the first place. I mean, this masses consciousness, all this... All collectivized consciousness of any kind, even if it's two people, it's like me and my girl. I mean, that's a nice thought, but collectivized consciousness is always an out for individual responsibility. You know, like people always want to collectivize their consciousness because they can't face the fact that they got to do it alone and get into this illusion of collectivization. Everything, everything you do is is an illusion to a certain level, and you have to just pick out the ones that that uh, are most convenient at any particular time. I mean, you can get into all those illusions of uh, of being a member of a rock and roll band or being part of a mass of you know an army, uh, a kiss army, or whatever. It's all it's all a way of getting away from the fact that that you're different significantly enough different from everybody else that there are some points in which you're going to be stuck alone trying to accomplish something I accept that I understand that I mean I think that's like you know Jesus was like that there's like no shame attached to being like that I mean that's what an artist is but also I think that when you're stuck if you put all your your most uh wonderful and communicative qualities concentrate them into a, some some body of work that has all those wondrous elements if if you're successful it would be possible to inspire millions and millions of people with something wonderful instead of something me mediocre it is possible it is possible I, I believe it's possible also i believe that that it's also possible that you'll win the New York State Lottery and win a million dollars, things like that. There are some, there are some things that um, the elements involved in bringing them to fruition are totally beyond human control. And uh, it's amazing how many of those things have to do with, <laughs> with uh, human lives and things like that. Like it certainly seems possible that, that some earth-shaking event could happen and it would entirely turn around everyone's consciousness on the planet, you know, and s they would suddenly have a whole other idea of the purpose of life, you know, and uh, and a whole other attitude about themselves and about uh, other people. It's like when you want to tell somebody, you see that they're doing something, that, that they're having an experience that you had, and you, like, learn from, from it, and you want to tell them how to do it. And you suddenly realize, you know, that it's nev never the same as actually being on the receiving end of that experience and having to go through it. And that's part of the reason why you're alive, is just to go through that experience and to learn from it in your own particular way. And no, nothing anybody tells you is going to make any difference. It's going to make it easier or give you any shortcut to get through that. Oh, I disagree. I think people can can tell you something that might take you a couple of days. What they can do is they can't take the experience from you, but somebody you love, for, you love, for instance, tells you stuff and you resist it, and then a couple of days later you have an experience that proves them to be true. It's a really nice thing. Oh, I, I agree with that, but, I, but I'm saying that, that that in no way shortcutted your necessity to have that experience. Yeah, yeah well, know any good jokes, Todd? 
stupid jokes. Let me see now. What do you do when an IRA terrorist throws a pin at you? <laughs> I don't know what. You run like hell because he's got a hand grenade in his mouth. <laughs> you can you can put laughter there if you want. I guess uh, you <laughs> right. Hey, come on! I got that joke from one of the Rolling Stones. Isn't rock and roll wonderful? You just sort of drop these names and have instant recognition. All kinds of imagery conjured well, I think, up. You know, they're good guys, the Rolling Stones. So no, I, I was always a Beatles fan. I was never. Oh, you're the kind of person I would I would have beat up if I was uh -huh. a boy in my time. Well, that was why I became a Beatles fan. Uh, because, you, you know, partly because I got beat up so <laughs> much, <laughs> probably. You I mean, you thought at at, that, at a particular point you don't emulate those people anymore. You don't emulate people that beat you up. You know, you want some kind of. That's probably why I was never an Elvis Presley fan because he embodied. All the sort of greaser consciousness, which was totally antithetical. Oh, I never thought so. I always thought he was a, ge a perfect gentleman. Oh yeah, well that's you know. Except when he played like a mean guy, who care cared more about a career. No, I, I always thought that he was very well groomed and always gentleman. Yeah, well he was a product. <laughs> At any rate, well I was into the Beatles because of the because it seemed so easy to get an instant level of. Acceptance. Oh, so all you had to do was have like long hair. You know, yeah. all you had to do was have long hair, have a uh -huh. one of those jackets that buttoned up to your neck with no collar on it, <laughs> and a pair of boots. Now, see, that's exactly what I didn't like about them. Uh huh. And I guess that's why I like the Rolling Stones because they were like. You I know, know, but but the Beatles, as re as opposed to the Rolling Stones, the Beatles did do that thing that that you want to happen. You know, which is to totally. Uh, oh, Todd, I have nothing against the Beatles. I think totally they did enthrall the, the global consciousness. Like different arts become the focus, you know, are the big attraction at different times. Just from this part of this century, it's been music. A lot more people got attracted, <coughs> for me, for instance, got attracted to music as a means of ego gratification and, uh, and uh, acceptance and possibly uh, fame and fortune. And now we're like suffering from this gigantic sort of baby boom, this glut of uh, people who got into music for totally transient reasons. Like on the outside, it's, it seems like, oh, you get a manager and then, you, and then you get a record contract and then you go out on the road and play and stuff like that. And, and uh, exoterically, that's exactly what you do, but, but uh, esoterically, you got all the sort of tension between the, you and your manager because you always have a particular vision that's totally being compromised, you know, from a manager's standpoint, I guess totally justifiably because of the realities of the business, you know, but they're always being told you don't understand and uh, and uh, realize yeah, that you sign a record contract, contract, sign a record contract, 90% of which you don't understand because it is, because it's status quo more or less, you know, all the stuff about foreign royalties, you know, and the, and uh, all the contingency little paragraphs and stuff, you know, contracts that nobody can interpret except the lawyer. I guess people always... Well, you know. I realize all that stuff is bad and stuff, but I'm, st I'm but so you, it's, happy. But it's not what you think about when you first get involved. You know, you're not running an orphan's home. The reason why you keep the band together is because you desire certain things to happen through this band, and it's too much trouble to start another band or whatever, you know. <laughs> And subsequently, you make the sacrifices to keep it working and keep it going. But down at the bottom of it, it's not your responsibility to support anybody except yourself. I'm not making any personal accusations, you understand, but whether people do it because they get a salary for it. Which gets back to the other, to the other point that I was talking about. It's like being in rock and roll is just like being in any other business or like going to driver training institute or uh yeah except it's more heartbreaking go, go to harvard it depends on the level of your expectations you know there are some people who who my expectations of everything are always high todd yeah well that's what i mean the, that to that extent there can be a lot of heartbreak involved but i'm saying is there are many people let's exclude you for the for the moment <laughs> that there are many people in the business who um who got into it not for any great aesthetic reason or because they had any musical trails to plays, but it's the same as wanting to be a lawyer. 
and Melvin Belli happens to be the Mick Jagger <laughs> of lawyers or something like that, and you uh, go to school and you work real hard, and if you're successful, then you'll be a lawyer in an established law firm, just like being in a famous rock and roll band, you know, with a more or less assured income, notoriety, and uh, all those things that you could get in any one of a n number of other jobs. You know, you know mm. since I was little, my main all I ever wanted to do was fall in love with somebody. My main thing in life was to have a boyfriend who I loved and who loved me. You know, it's everything else is like, uh, I mean, to me, that's the hardest work you can do is to achieve, like, a great, uh, to achieve some, achieve a wondrous union between two people is the hardest thing you could do. Jim Morrison didn't die of a drug overdose if he died at all, and Elvis Presley didn't die of a, dr a drug overdose. They died of broken hearts. Wow. He may have smashed his face on the pavement, <laughs> <laughs> but he died of a broken heart. You know what, Todd? You know what I was thinking of? You should do a, like, a little show of like you as like, different characters later. Like, Don't you ever wonder, like, whatever happened to the Mad Hatter, you know? Whatever happened to... Uh, it sounds like a series of uh, one minute yeah, right. well, Exxon could be sure. messages or something for the centennial. Could be like, you know. Whatever happened to those old you are parts like, we used to like love. Like Edward huh? R. Murrow comes in. You are there and it could be Pinocchio's house, you know, in Italy. And I am. Pinocchio's house in Italy. Yeah, there's a couple movies I got to do. You haven't been in a movie yet, have you? Um, no. The right film hasn't come along, right? Well, don't worry, I'll do a good movie. I mean, we'll I wish... I'll be in it. Yeah, that's what I keep telling my guys. <laughs> One day we'll have a good movie and I'll be in it. I wouldn't have minded having Well, we're it. still going for our own TV show. I think that's the thing to get. Want to be my first guest? <laughs> well, I still haven't gotten on a Johnny Carson show. Which, to tell you the truth, you know, when you ask about, like, crass uh, um, motivations... I must say that if, if, I mean, I can, if in searching my soul, that is the one, only real crass motivation that I ever had in is getting to get the on the Johnny Carson show. Yeah, since. For you gotta realize you get to say so little on the Johnny Carson show. They have. I wouldn't care. Half a dozen I just guys like just to, to be sit with there them. next to Johnny. Yeah, I'd be real. I think we just laugh. It's like an American institution. Yeah. You Did know. You ever what? want to meet the president? No. I like. I wanted to meet Lyndon Johnson once, but but Why that was Lyndon it. Why Lyndon Johnson? Well, after he died, I got I I after was watching. After he died, you wanted to meet him. Well, I you know what I think it was the kind of guy you want to meet when he's he, still alive. Huh? No, you know I just I got yeah I appreciated him too late. Now I really I wish I would appreciated him when he was alive, but I didn't. I have to admit. Well, he but, was a down home <coughs> kind of guy. I think that John Wayne should, my dream is to see John Wayne do the Lyndon Johnson story. Don't you think that would be perfect? Uh, John Wayne is They could give him like big prosthetic ears. Lyndon Johnson had the biggest earlobes I ever saw. Until you like hung down below his jowls. Would you go to see uh, Star Wars with Lyndon Johnson or would something? Would I see Star Wars with Lyndon Johnson? Star Wars. Did you like Star Wars? I like the special effects in Star Wars. I thought some of the acting was abominable. And like, I don't believe in any of these outer space movies that say people are exactly the same as they are in Tuckahoe. You know, it's like... Oh, because the guy like seemed the, like he was from Ohio, right? Well, they just like do the, they do, they just do the same dumb things, you know, like stupid things, like that even the most numbskull person in the audience would say, is sitting there saying, don't do that. And then they do it. There's always some guy who's like, for no reason, disobeying direct orders in order to pro oh, yeah, yeah, propagate yeah. some kind of a storyline. Oh, yeah, right. It makes no no sense, you know, like, all, here they are, like, trying to protect humanity, and all these people are just, like, acting like they're drugged, they're dizzy, you know. Hawaii Five-0, Todd? What Hawaii five I never watch it. McGarrett is only, he doesn't have self-righteous indignation. He's trying to keep Hawaii a beautiful state to live in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Being in rock and roll is just like being in any other business.